God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, said Christ our high priest, interceding on our behalf, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation, and by his equality with you free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers them. The Lord hears the cry of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But then who co the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard. But no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whatever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we see Jesus and, both, and the apostles as well, both speaking to what they have seen and what they have heard, and choosing to trust in being obedient to God above all else, no matter what those consequences are. And so we see our Lord, the one who is born from heaven, from all eternity, his relationship with the Father, becomes incarnate, and in his mission he speaks the words of God. He speaks to what he has seen and what he has heard. He speaks of God the Father. And he's not afraid to speak that because he knows that it's true. As it says, he's seen and he's heard. 
This is what he knows. And the apostles likewise then, they speak of what they have seen and what they have heard from Jesus himself. And they speak that regardless of what those consequences are. And we see that even the high priests are now beginning to contemplate putting now the apostles to death for this. We see that they're willing to continue to speak that word because they know why they're speaking. They're not doing this merely for the acclaim or for the public appeal. They're doing it because they've seen a man rise from the dead. They've seen him and they've understood from what he has told them that he is the one who's fulfilled all these prophecies of Israel. They realize that he was the one who was speaking from the Father. And so they now carry that message forth. And they continue to trust in God who has given them this message that he will provide for them and he will care for them that they might complete what they're called to do. And so they do. And so for us, this gives us that impetus to, one, to pay attention to what the Lord is saying to us, to continue to live by his commands, as it said earlier in the week of, the one who loves God is the one who keeps his commands. That's how we know we love the Lord. And so for us to continue to walk in his ways, to continue to be informed by what the Lord speaks in the Gospels and through the church, and continue to live our lives based on our relationship with God, even when it puts us at odds with perhaps the culture of the time. This also gives us that courage then to speak up in the public square as Christians, to speak for those things that we know are true and good, and against those which we know go against the natural law. But we do know, also following the disciples, that this doesn't give us license to disobey whatever rules in society we don't like, because then we can sometimes confuse God's law just with our own tastes. And so we see the apostles, in yesterday's reading from Acts of the Apostles, when the guards come to bring them back after the angel had broke them out of prison, they came back without force, as in they followed the guards and did not put up a fight there. And so we see, and even St. Peter in his letter will speak about being obedient to the emperor, being obedient to the civil authorities. But we see that that's always being obedient to those things when it serves until it cuts against what we know God is calling us to do. And that puts us in a bit of a tension. It's not an easy thing to live and to discern, to figure out. But that is what we're called to do as Christians. Because we know that all of us have been put here above all under God's law, and that all those who serve in these various temple or authorities do so under the permissive will, at least, of the Lord, who governs all things at the end. And so we trust that God is working through all of these things, and that his will will be accomplished, even as we pray and as we work for these things in our day-to-day -day lives, and as we continue to stand up for the truth so that it might win out. And so we ask the Lord today as we come before him in Holy Communion that he might give us that strength and that courage, but also that deeper sense of faith and relationship with him so we can lean on that and speak to that and testify to what we too have seen and have heard. Confident in the Lord's care for us, we bring our petitions before him. For the church, may God grant each believer the grace to live faithfully as his children. We pray to the Lord. For all elected officials, may God convict their hearts of the truth and empower them in the service of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are persecuted for their faith, may God protect them and reward them for their faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may the Lord be our guiding light in every step we take. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, may God welcome them into his eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for John Markey, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear and answer our prayers according to your holy will. We ask through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and cheers be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we conform to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 <coughs> Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. Chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Joining us online, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to remind, we have adoration tomorrow, uh, all day, it'll end at 5.30, because we have uh, first reconciliation for the kids. Uh, we do have a lot of sign-ups still left open, so please do uh, take a slot if you're able. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks.